Well, we're taking a basic wind orchestra. The conductor is actually Stuart Kutari has, has uh, joined us here today, and we're very excited about that. Thank you for taking some time. I know this is kind of a hectic time for you. Just finished a rehearsal, and we heard some great music. And we're really looking forward to the concert. I'm going to ask you about the program. Can you tell us a little bit about, about, about what to expect tonight? Sure, sure. Uh, we're we're doing a, a set of four pieces um, that are pretty wildly contrasting in style mm -hmm. and uh, temperament and emotional uh, content, uh, which is kind of one of my fundamentals with programming mm -hmm. in general. I like I like to make sure that uh, the the landscape changes often enough for the audience that they can get a lot of variety and uh, never kind of sit for too long in any one thing for just a few minutes. So the first piece is, uh, uh, I think, a brilliant rescoring for modern brass ensemble of the uh, Richard Strauss Vienna Philharmonic Fanfare. This has been an um, orchestral brass favorite for a long, long time. Uh, Pat uh, sort of made an addi addition so people could play it with their school band. In other words, you've written the phoning part, you know, right. and uh, he skillfully reinforced the fourth horn parts that uh, are really, really, unless you're an absolute top-level pro, you, you're going to really kind of be hurting for that fourth horn part. So it's really typical brilliance in my style of Pat Cummings. And I asked him to conduct this fanfare because he'll be uh, installed tomorrow morning as the new uh, president of the uh, College Band Records National Association. Very good. Thank you. And ironically, I will be... Uh, installed as president-elect. We're going in, you know, kind of like two boxcars. Great honor and a yeah. lot of work. After, after that, we, we're playing the world premiere of uh, uh, San Francisco composer, Juilliard trained composer. Actually, all three of the composers on our program after Strauss are all Juilliard, tra Juilliard trained under the students of John Troiano. Uh, Mason Bates is currently a conductor, or uh, sorry, composer in residence. Uh, with the Chicago Symphony and uh, uh, sort of a musical advisor to the new, new music ensemble uh, series that they do. Um, he wrote a piece for the CSO and Ricardo Muti in 2012 called Alternative Eng uh, Energy, uh, four movement work, which is quite wonderful. He had the idea that the second movement, Chicago 2012, which uh, involves some uh, sampled sounds from the Fermi lab particle collider and so basically he wrote a six minute piece that, is, that uh, introduces actual sampled sounds from this particle collider along with the orchestra and then this new version for wind ensemble for the you know, modern symphonic wind ensemble wind orchestra. And uh, we think it turned out great. Uh, it's very exciting, about six minutes long. And the idea is that uh, these two disparate kind of sound fields collide and then kind of do a hip hop dance together. <laughs> and, uh, it's really very brilliant and uh, we're so happy to have uh, all three of the composers, uh, living composers with us tonight. Uh, the right after uh, Mason's piece, Chicago 2012, we're going to be doing a 2009 symphony by uh, Jonathan Newman, terrifically talented uh, composer. Uh, his symphony number one is subtitled My Hands Are a City. And uh, this, this piece is really uh, guided and shaped by Newman's uh, infatuation and curiosity and longtime affection for beat culture. Mm -hmm. uh, whether it's, you know, Charlie Parker, uh, you know, the, the beat poets or Jack Kerouac, who, you know, he, uh, it's, a, it's a fascinating, uh, really important artistic time in, in American history. And uh, it, it's a beautiful work. The first movement is agitated, restless, like the whole generation mm -hmm. uh, at that time. And uh, the second movement is, is suggests uh, a sort of a, a tranquil, kind of Copeland-esque kind of setting. And the third movement, uh, subtitled My Hands Are a City, begins with the, an arching, long bass clarinet solo and ends with what to me sounds like some sort of teleportation or trans transfiguration to another world of, of the, the idea of this uh, expressive movement that was so raw bone and so real and so energetic. And coming of age. Absolutely, yeah. And I think 
any, anybody who listens to this piece um, will hear how much heart you've put into this and, and how much affection you have for that, that piece. Then uh, we're doing uh, John Mackey's uh, first band symphony, we've all been waiting quite a while for, uh, called uh, Wine Dark Sea. And it's based on uh, the narrative chapter of uh, the Odyssey by Homer. And uh, it's, uh, it's an extraordinary uh, work that I think uh, the first movement is entitled Hubris. And uh, we were talking about, uh, uh, we're talking about uh, some mere humans, Odysseus and his crew just won the Trojan War and feeling pretty good about themselves and arrogant to the point of raping, killing, looting, pillaging on their way back home. Uh, so it is very aggressive and very punishing. Uh, the second movement is the story of uh, uh, Odysseus being washed up, having lost his crew and lost everything because the gods took exception to his arrogance and they slapped him down pretty hard. He's miraculously ends up on, on uh, the island of, of the Calypso, the goddess that's been stationed by herself. She takes him in, heals him. They share a relationship for seven years, and then uh, Odysseus decides, well, you know what, I just need to write a family. So he's out. <laughs> Third movement is uh, <laughs> is kind of a, the narrative is that it's is Odysseus trying to get home and being put through the torture of kind of paying for his sins with uh, ghostly spirits haunting him and, and he finally has to kind of fight his way through that and, and at the end he can see his way home. We hear this, this uh, march music that at the beginning is arrogance and at the end it's, it's terrified triumph that he's going to make it through. But it, it's, un, you know, we don't have anything else like this except another Mackie piece that has this kind of emotional range and this kind of sound world. And, you know, there we're, we're going to make sounds in there that maybe that room's not used to tonight, I think. And, uh, and you're telling quite a story. Yeah, it's really, it's a big story. But there's an enormous amount of contrast. And uh, I, I, th I think that uh, it's a wonderful work. I'm very proud of the program and how it works together. I'm very happy. Um, that we were able to kind of put reunite three Juilliard trained composers that all uh, are very close to John Coriano, arguably the most important American composer living today. What uh, any challenges come to mind as you're putting this program together with the, the ensemble? With well, the integrating the electronics uh, with uh, Mason Bates' work. You know, that's a congruent because you've got the architecture of how you're going to actually physically realize the sound and, and whatnot. And that, that took a little while. Sure. And uh, then you've got to get, you've got to figure out how you're going to make the sounds audible enough to the people on stage that they can actually coordinate with the distorted sounds and not be overbearing to the audience. And um, that uh, took quite a while. But I think we got it. And Mason was here for the sound check that we just finished. And uh, I think he's, he's happy with the result and very pleased with how the band version of this piece uh, shows what he intended, uh, maybe maybe even in some ways a little clearer than than the orchestra version, which if you listen to it on iTunes, and it's available, that piece, that whole four movement piece is available on iTunes. It would be very impressed with that, obviously. No good CSO does that to you. <laughs> but there's something about a band and, and some, you know, just some more resources there. And at, at the end of the at the end of the day, they're sort of uh, fun flicks, <laughs> and bands <laughs> typically do that a little better. There you go. Yeah. <laughs> well, I think that's that's a, that's a very interesting explanation. I think we'll be uh, we'll really look forward to the concert. Thanks for taking the time today to to uh, speak with us about this. My pleasure, and thank you so much for being here and doing this. Yes, it's it's been our pleasure. We've heard some great music, and we're going to hear some great music tonight. So if you're listening, this is the 2015 College Band Directors National Association Conference. It's a concert from the. Immerhorn Symphony Center. Terry, thanks very much, and we look forward to the concert tonight.